remember all the disease behind, the things that torment your life, and the things that torture your life. You'll arise, leave everything behind, and you go free, you are healed. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says, But when the multitude saw it, they will see a they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men, not ordinary man, unto the Son of Man, unto the Son of God, unto Christ, who has done five. Reading from verse 13. In Acts chapter 5, verse 13, <clears throat> the God of our fathers restored Jesus whom he slew and hanged on a tree on the cross. In verse 31, him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior is the Father God in heaven that has appointed him, approved of him, anointed him that he will be the savior and the healer and uh, to give uh, repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. He gives us, we just come to him already. He's the only one appointed, approved, anointed of the Heavenly Father that will give us repentance. And the repentance he gives is genuine repentance, not superficial repentance, not make-believe repentance, not insincere repentance. He gives us the genuine the genuine repentance and because the repentance came from him he now follows up with forgiveness in acts chapter 10 verse 38 Acts 10 verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth of the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all how many people am i there Am I included? I'm asking for you. Are you included? Yeah. Healing, healing. He'll heal you among all the people. It will heal today in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then it says, He healed all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Look at number three here. Number three, the partakers of his forgiveness and healing. The partakers of his uh, healing and of his forgiveness. We're coming to Psalm 103. 103, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Uh, my brother, my sister, if you want to receive uh, forgiveness and healing from God, uh, we cannot be grudging God. God, look at me. I pay my tithe and offering. Look at me. I walk for the Lord. Look at me. I do this. I run up. I run down. And, you know, I'm sick now. <laughs> we don't get healed by grumbling. We don't get healed by fighting God. We don't get healed by frowning at God. You come with a cheerful mind. You come with an open heart. Whatever you are going through, that, that's, not, that's not God. Jesus healed all that are oppressed of the devil, oppressed of the devil. You don't revenge on God what the devil is doing. You don't retaliate on God what the devil is doing. You come, you understand, your problem is not God. The barrenness is not God. And the, 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 uh, the destruction is not God. You know, that's what the people of the world, that's what they think. When an accident happens, they say, they say work of God. Uh, when somebody has lost uh, something precious, they say that's the work of God. They say just accept, just accept. Can we question God? That's what God has done. God is not our problem. God is our savior. It's our redeemer. It's our helper. It's the one that says I will help you. So come with a joyful mind, an expectant mind. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits for you here today? Look at verse 3. In verse 3, oh forgive it. How many iniquities? How many iniquities? Well, when you come to God, he forgives you. And then as you get back home, you kneel down, you are coming from the service and say, God, I am sorry. 
forgive me. How about the one you got just now, a few minutes ago? Then the following Sunday, God, forgive me. I have done what I shouldn't have done. I have not done what I should have done. I thought he made you a new creature when he forgave you last Sunday. When he forgave you that time, you offered yourself and you submitted yourself to God. Let's change our prayer. Let's understand. He forgives, he forgives. Who forgives all thine iniquities? Who heals all thy diseases? Amen. Forgiveness has come, and healing has come. Beyond the forgiveness and the healing, look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? You will not be destroyed. Until you finish everything the Lord has said you will do on earth, nothing will touch your life. Say, until I finish. Everything God has ordained for me on earth, my life is secured. You know, there are people that, you know, carry insecurity on their mind. There are people that carry insecurity in their thoughts. Every time they want to go out, they carry insecurity in their mind. You are special before God. Who redeemest thy life from destruction and crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Look at verse 5. It says, Who satisfies thy mouth with good things? Give me a good amen. amen. Then it says, So that. Those two words, so that. It's a connection between your mouth. And then your life, so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. It's talking about it satisfies your mouth with good things at the primary level. It satisfies your mouth with good, appropriate food. There are foods, kinds of foods that we eat, and it doesn't strengthen our lives. There's too much sugar in your system, and it gives you sugar diabetes. There's too much salt. After the people who have prepared the food, they put enough salt, then you sprinkle more, and it gives you hypertension. And then somebody has drunk a water, and water is the most refreshing liquid you can drink. And it wants to drink alcohol upon that. That destroys your health. Other people, they are taking in something very good and nice, and they want to put the smoke of tobacco in. You see, our mouth is connected with the weakness of the body or the strength of the body. But when God plans everything that you take, it satisfies your mouth with good things so that the youth, the renewed strength, the renewed vigor, and the renewed power comes on and the youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. You should be asking yourself, <clears throat> are there things that come into my mouth and they make me weak? And they make me without strength. Are there things that come inside my mouth that will be in eating and eating and eating? And then you're losing your strength. We, we change that. We turn that around and we say, we're now going to be satisfied in our mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Good things will happen to everyone. We're looking at James chapter 5. In James chapter 5, we're looking at verse 14. In verse 14, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord, in verse 15, verse 15 says, And the prayer of faith shall save, heal the sick. You didn't say amen to that thing. Uh, let me ask you a simple question. When any elder, any preacher, any overseer of the GS, when any of us, when we stand here and we pray, what kind of prayer do you think we we'll pray? Is it prayer of doubting or the prayer of faith? Any elder, any preacher any pastor when he comes to pray he believes in his heart 
that there is a God in heaven that answers prayer. And he's sure that God will hear. And so that elder comes to stand and he says, let us pray in your mind, understand. He is representing God and he prays. What kind of prayer? The prayer of faith. And it says, the prayer of faith shall save. Oh, why did he say, say heal? Well, the same Greek word that says save is the same Greek word that says heal, sozo. That's the sozo there. And that's why it says it will save, it will heal, it will deliver the seed. And when I stand and pray for you after this service, what kind of prayer am I going to pray? The prayer of faith and the prayer of faith. It's not the man. It's not his title. It's not because, you know, I am so and so. It is because he, whoever he is, a man, a woman, the minister, he prays the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, heal the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. Look at this. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Healing, forgiveness, forgiveness, and healing, all in the same verse. It has come to you. We're coming now to point number two. In point number two, we're looking at the ascertained call to freedom in holiness. It gives us something that is certain and something that is sure. Ascertained call. He is the one calling us from heaven. He says, I call you to come and have freedom. I call you to come and have healing. I call, call you to come and have holiness. And because the one that calls, that's why he does what he promises to do. Uh, there are people that say, Pastor, I've been in this church now for 20 long years, 30 long years, and I believe in holiness. I believe it's in the Bible. I believe God demands it. I believe God can do it. But Pastor, I don't know how to have it. You will have it today. Because you see, he is the one that calls. And faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. You've been struggling to do it by yourself. I will not get angry anymore. I will not backbite anymore. I will not have bitterness or hatred against anybody anymore. And the moment you say that, an offense comes. And say, uh -uh. even though I said I will not, but this one, if I'm not angry, I'll be dumb. <laughs> no. You see, when you come to God, He takes hold of your life and He calls you to holiness and He calls you to peace with people. And as you kneel down there or you stand up there and you say, Lord, all of my heart I bring unto you, cleanse me and wash me and purge me and purify me. And you believe that He has promised and He cannot fail. You will do a work in your heart. You go out now and somebody does something they spray the splash they take water on your clean clothes you look at them you smile he doesn't know what is he didn't know that deliberately it's because of that pothole there you give a reason a good reason for the people that may do anything against you and your heart cools down it's no more hurt your heart is no more burning for the fire of hunger big anger because he gives you the freedom in Holiness. We're looking at John chapter 8, verse 30. It says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. In verse 31, verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Indeed, at school, I learned a subject that I mastered. But you know, since that time, I didn't study that subject again. I shifted to another subject. And because I didn't continue, if I were to take the exam I took, that I had a good result, if I go to take that exam now, I will not be able to make head or tail about anything. You know why? I didn't continue studying that subject, reading that subject, learning that subject every day. The same thing. You come to the Lord, and He gives you salvation. He gives you sanctification, and then you say, praise the Lord, I got it, and this is real and genuine. But you don't continue refreshing yourself, 
relearning. And you don't continue in committing, consecrating yourself. You don't continue in examining that thing, appreciating that thing that you've got. Before long, everything will look like it's fizzled away. If you continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed, verse 32, and ye shall know the truth. The truth will yield before. If we don't continue learning and reading and studying, we'll forget. We'll forget, and then we will not know the truth like we knew the truth 30 years ago. Foundation member, deeper life. You came 40 years ago, 45 years ago, and you were schooled and you are deep and you are refreshed and you are renewed in holiness but since those 45 years now you have not continued refreshing your mind and looking at the same thing so that the depths and the height and the length and the breadth of holiness you had at that time you, don't, you are not like that now and people even say brother is not like he used to be Sister is not like she used to be. But today, God will make us have a restoration of everything in Jesus' name. We're looking at three things. Number one, we're looking at the promise of freedom and holiness. Number two, the power of freedom with holiness. Number three, the partakers of freedom through holiness look at number one number one we have the promise of freedom and holiness look at john chapter 8 verse 36 in john chapter 8 verse 36 if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed and remember all the promises of god are ye and amen, yes and amen in Christ. And this is the promise that ye shall be free indeed. We're looking at Luke chapter 1, verse 72. In Luke chapter 1, verse 72, to perform the mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers. And remember, his holy covenant in verse 74. Verse 74, it says that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies praise the lord praise the lord you need to understand delivered out of the hands of our enemies it doesn't mean that the enemies died no doesn't always mean that let's say for example here you are and the enemy is in one local village in your country and then you get passport and visa and the, and the enemy doesn't have access to passport or visa and after getting the visa you travel to a far country and he doesn't have your number he doesn't have your location where you live you're far away and he's not dead but he cannot touch you anymore any stone he throws at you will land in his premises. He cannot get to the country where you have gone because God now has translated you to the kingdom of his dear son. The enemy is still alive, but she is it's useless. He cannot touch you anymore. I'm talking about you. You are transferred, you are translated to the kingdom of his dear son. You're free. Look at this. It says that we might serve him without fear. You know, sometimes when you see people every day, you see they are frowning. You see their anger on their faces. And you hear their words. And they say, I will deal with you. Fear comes in your heart. But when you relocate, you can't see his angry face anymore. And you cannot see or hear all the words he's trying to say. You only see better people, happier people, smiling people, loving people. All your fears are gone. I invite you to come to the presence of Christ and to look away from the angry faces that threaten you. And look away and block your ears to the angry voices that speak to you and hear the voice of gentle, merciful, loving Christ, fear has gone. In verse, 45, uh, verse 75, it says, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Will he do it? 
I said, will he do it? Come to number two here. Number two, we're looking at the power for freedom with holiness. The power for freedom with holiness. In First Thessalonians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 12. See what the Lord has said concerning you, concerning me, concerning us, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Then in verse 13, in verse 13, it says, to the end for the purpose he may establish you, establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all saints. He will do it. He has the power. He has, he has given the promise. And he says, this is what he will do. How do I get that? I come to Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm reading from verse 28, and it says, Has thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he giveth power to the faith. He giveth power to the faith. He giveth power to the faith. You know, many years ago when I, you know, was not like I am now, many, many years ago, I used to watch the boxers and they punch each other, punch each other. And then one of them will get tired fainting. And the other fellow is still keeping on punching him, but the man is now fainting. Eventually, the uh, referee will come and separate them so that he doesn't kill the man. You know, in life, that is like that. You're punching, you're striving, you're fighting. You're fighting against sin, against Satan, against uh, all that persecution, and you're fighting. And if it continues, you're weary, you faint. And the power to stand, and the power to be what you had been at the beginning of the fight, you don't have that anymore. Is that at that position now, you come to him who gives power to the fainting. And life will come back. Strength will come back. The ability will come back. The vision will come back. It says, he giveth power. Giveth power. Every day, he gives the power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. And then in verse 30, he tells us, even the youths, even the young shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall because there is no supply of new strength and new power and they're fainting. That's why they fall. And then in verse 31, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord, I will not go out until he refreshes the power, he renews the strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. That's talking about you. And it's, I said he's talking about you. They shall walk and not faint. All the fainting in your life, the fretting in your life, the weakness in your life, as you wait upon the Lord, as you ask him, it will renew everything you have lost in your system, in your spiritual life, in Jesus' name. We're looking at number three here. Number three, the partakers of freedom through holiness. The partakers of uh, freedom through Holiness. We're looking at Second uh, Peter chapter one. We're looking at verse three. Second Peter chapter one verse three. According uh, as his divine power, not according to your feeling, according to your thinking, according according to you know the depreciation of power in your life. It's according to his divine power. He has given unto us. He has given unto me. He has given unto me. You wanted to drink cool, cold water. 
so that you can satisfy the dryness you feel and you ask maybe your wife you ask maybe your child hey, can you get me cold water from there and then now you look away you're doing other things waiting for the cold water and the cold water has been put on the table and you go there a glass of water and uh, but because you didn't look that way you didn't know it had been provided for you you say ah, darling what's happening i asked for cold water I'm dying of thirst. And Daniel said, but it's there. I put it there from the moment you spoke, but you didn't know. The Lord has provided everything you need for your holiness. It's right there. And it's at your reach. And the moment you ask him, he said, look at that. I put it there since how, since, uh, how long ago. I didn't know, but now you know. I said, now you know. Holiness available for you. Holiness provided for you, says, according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. That's holiness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Your life will be glorious. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, it says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers, partakers, partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. We're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That's the human part. That's your part. That's my part. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You see, when we're saved, we abstain from evil. Sin, no. Iniquity, no. Transgression, no. But after that salvation, there are things called appearance of evil let me explain you are a teacher and you go from house to house to teach these young people and these uh, this one now in this family they have a daughter a girl she's grown up but she's still in high school and the father or the mother employed you teach her let her make a good grade in uh, studies and you happen to be master in important subjects and so you always come but as days go by you're getting infatuated interested in the girl and, but you don't say anything or do anything you know? and you come to teach her this day and you close the door and you lock the door and you're teaching the innocent girl you are you are the teacher you are the master locking the door like that and then the mother just wanted to ask something from the daughter and saw that the door is locked uh -uh. knocks the door eventually you open the door teacher what's happening why are you locking the door i'm not doing anything but i'm just teaching her why lock the door uh, that's an appearance of evil evil can come like that and then the parents can begin to suspect you abstain from all appearance of evil the file you have in the in the office and the person comes for the file you put it under the desk and you put it in the drawer there and you lock it up and what is my file what is my file i need this uh, something urgently and you're unsucking here and there what's the meaning of that are you looking for bribes abstain from all appearance of evil your friends say uh, you know they come and they are drinking their alcohol and you are there with them and so as they are drinking uh, uh, they say how about you you feel ashamed to say i don't drink and then you get a bottle of alcohol and they are drinking and you you are pretending you are not drinking but you pour it in your glass and you hold it is that not an appearance of evil? There are things that will appear as if you are doing evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. In verse 23, it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Will it happen? will it happen look at verse 24 faithful is he 
that calleth you who also will do it. He'll do it in our lives. He'll do it and give us an unforgettable experience of sanctification and holiness in Jesus' name. Point number three now. In point number three, we have the ascending call to his fullness from heaven. Ascending call. That is, he called us before, he upgraded the call, he's upgrading the call, and he's giving us a higher call today than we ever have. In John chapter 10, reading from verse 10, John 10 verse 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. He will not steal anything from me. He will not kill me. <laughs> That's why you say your own. You will not cut short the program, the plan of God in your life, in Jesus' name. And you will not destroy me. He will not destroy me. You know, that fellow there is a destroyer. He doesn't know the face of anybody. Young, old, boy, girl, man, woman. That fellow destroyer. I'm not pointing at anybody. I'm, you know, just pointing, you know, preaching. And you know, that's a destroyer. And then you carry yourself there. And this person doesn't differentiate gentleman, but, um, aggressive man, anybody that comes to his vicinity. If you carry yourself there, he destroys. Why? If we know that this personality, the devil, he goes about, he's looking for whom to destroy, devour. Why will you carry yourself to them? To have a list, to the servants of Satan, to the people that are thirsty of blood. Why will you befriend them? Why will you get near them? Why don't you come out from among them? So that you do not sell yourself to a destroyer. That's what the devil does. But Jesus said, I am calm that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly abundant life for you three things we're looking at number one we're looking at the promise of the fullness in the holy ghost the promise of the fullness in the holy ghost number two the power through the fullness of the holy ghost number three the partakers of the fullness of the holy ghost you know we have the promise then we do the prayer, then we become the possessors of the power, and then we have the real power and fullness of the Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed I'm saved? Good. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe I'm sanctified? Wonderful. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Look at number one. In number one, we're looking at the promise of the fullness of the Holy Ghost. We're looking at Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, removal, forgiveness of sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I will receive. You will receive. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop asking the Lord. Because he gives the Holy Ghost to them that ask him. Verse 39. In verse 39. For the promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. The promise is unto you. Are there some things you have you have not gone to claim? Sometimes you come out of college or you come out of the university and they give you, they say, yes, you passed. Yes, you have a good grade here. And they give you a temporary certificate. They're still printing the original, the real certificate. But you have the temporary certificate. And it spells everything there. And then they say, come back, come back for the original, for the real one. But you know it's there. You know the way back to your colleges, the same place you uh, did, uh, you know, all those years, the same place we are going to get that certificate, the same place you got salvation, the same place you got sanctification, it's the same place you are going to get the baptism and the power in the Holy Ghost. But 
you read it, go to collect the original. After all, I have the evidence there, the temporary certificate. You know what? You want to have a particular employment, and it's the highest of the high. And then they say, present your documents, and you put temporary certificate there, they throw it back at you. Where is the original? It's in the college. I've not gone to collect it. Well, go and collect before you came back. Another person having the same qualification, he has original, he has got the job. Why don't you go there? It will take your time. You need that power. You need that baptism, immersion, and all the Holy Ghost. And it says, for the promise is unto you and unto your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the power through the fullness of the Holy Ghost. The power, the power. You will have power. Not just you know, some people, they say, I have the Holy Ghost, Pastor. Can I sh show you I have the Holy Ghost? I say, Go ahead. And then they begin to shake. And I say, That's the Holy Ghost. Anybody can shake. Even a sinner can shake like that. Have the reality of the power of God in your life. You will have power. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And ye shall receive power. Always think about that. I speak in tongues. Go beyond that. Ye shall receive power. I shake and shake. Ye shall receive power, and then there's a way my head will shake when somebody uh, talks about something, and the Holy Ghost comes, and my head will shake. Uh huh. Ye shall receive power, power to speak confidently, power to preach effectively, power to heal the sick, power to, to deliver the oppressed, power to reproduce the miracles of Christ. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. I pray that power will come on the beloved children of God, sanctified children of God today, in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Number three, we're looking at the partakers of the fullness of the Holy Ghost. The partakers, the partakers. We're looking at John chapter 7. John chapter 7. We're reading from verse 37. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried with a loud voice, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, that's what stands between us and receiving the power of the Holy Ghost. We desire, we thirst, we passionate, we seek him, we come to him. He remembers what he has done. He has saved us. And that Savior said, come back. And we come back, he sanctifies us. And that sanctifier says, come back. And we come back. And we have a desire, very strong desire. And we're passionate and thirsty. And because we're thirsty, it's like if I don't get water to drink, I will not be myself. The times thirst gets to that level that we can't concentrate on any other thing. We are so thirsty, we must drink. When you understand everything I should have done, I couldn't do because I lack the power of the Holy Ghost. The boldness, the energy, the, the resources I should have, I do not have them because I am missing the agency of all power in my life. And you are so desperate now. And you say, I must have the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what it takes. That Jesus Christ saying, if any man thirst, let him leave everything he's doing. Let him focus on this power of the Holy Ghost. And come unto me, unto me who saved him unto me who sanctified him let him come unto me he's not a stranger to me i know him he knows me a savior sanctifier let him come unto me and drink look at verse 38 in verse 38 he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly 
out of his innermost being, out of his inner man, shall flow rivers of living water. He says, as you come, at salvation he gives us, it's like we draw water out of the well of salvation. But now, as we come, it's not just a drop of water, a glass of water. It's not just a punch of water. It is now rivers of living water. Out of his innermost being, out of his inner man, will gush out, will flow out rivers of living water. Verse 39, it says, but they speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him. They that believe on the Savior, salvation. They that believe on the sanctifier, they have sanctification. They that believe on the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Those are the people that have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. They speak he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now he is glorified. He sees at the right hand of the Father on earth. And being exalted to siege by the Father, he has not poured down and given us this Holy Ghost, which he now see and hear. Blessings have come for you. Freedom. Forgiveness. Sanctification. Holiness and the fullness of heaven in your life today in Jesus' name. And as you don't hear anyone, any extraneous voice, as you don't see anyone, any strange personality, a stranger in the meeting, as you don't pay attention to them, and you focus on God, and you focus on Christ, and you focus on the one that came and sacrificed, and he gave his life for you, and he's giving you the promise, he's giving you the nature, and the nature of heaven, and all those strangers, you block them away from your side and you block them away from your mind and you say Jesus here am I today I want what you have I want what you provide I want that forgiveness I want that healing I want uh, that freedom and I want that holiness and I want that fullness coming from heaven and your mind and your heart and your life is centered on God and you are asking you come seeking the Lord that heavenly virtue that heavenly power that heavenly anointing will come upon your life in jesus name let all strange voices be silent before you all strange sights be silent before you let the lord carry them out and carry them away so that they can leave you with god and there's nothing between you and god and with all your heart and with all your mind you say lord i want what you have for me i want what you've got for me and today with nothing between nothing between nothing between you and the lord the lord will give you everything you need in abundance to Day in Jesus' name. Let's rise up, let's rise up and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. I come to you. I come with desire. I come with passion. I come with thirst. I am thirsty, Lord. I am thirsty, Lord. And everything you have for me, you're going to give unto me. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Don't listen to any strange voice, extraneous voice, and don't see any strange sight. Don't let anything come be foot between you and the almighty God and what he has promised to do he will do in your life open your mouth open your mouth and tell the Lord let your prayer come from your heart let your prayer come deep from your soul and let your prayer come because you're thirsty because you need the forgiveness salvation so precious if you are not saved now when are you going to be saved why will you allow anyone to take the opportunity of salvation away from you let all the earth keep silence for uh, before him the lord is in his holy temple the lord in his holy sanctuary and he wants to say he wants to heal he wants to deliver he wants to set free and let those extraneous voices be silenced before him tell the lord tell the lord and say lord here am i lord here am I, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my being. I want the forgiveness. 
I want the pardon. I want the healing. I want the freedom. I want the holiness. I want the sanctification. Lord, here I am. Here I am. No other thing will catch my interest. No other thing will catch my sight. No other thing will distract me. What you have for me is what I come for. What you have for me is what I come for. Give it to me, Lord. Give it to me, Lord. Faithfully see that follows you who also will do it. Faithful. Faithful, faithful is faithfulness reaches unto heaven and it reaches unto all generations. Faithful is he that calleth you. He will do it. Faithful, faithful is he, he saves. Faithful is he, he forgives. Faithful is he, he sets free. Faithful is he, he heals and delivers. And faithful is he, he breaks every year. Faithful is he, he makes us holy. Holy. For no peace with all men, and holiness without which no man, no woman, no boy, no girl will see the Lord. It takes holiness, holiness of heart, holiness in your soul, holiness in your thoughts, holiness in your planning, holiness in your decisions, holiness in your work. Holiness in everything you do, holiness everywhere you find yourself. Without that holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Tell the Lord, nothing between, nothing between. Lord, my heart, my life, my soul, my whole plan, everything for you. I want to live for your glory. I want to live in the power of the Spirit of God. I don't want to play games with my Christian experience. I want the real thing, the virtue of the Lord that brings peace in the heart, the reality of Holiness experience in the heart. I want the real thing, the power of the Holy Ghost. And I will not take chances or allow anyone to take this heavenly provision away from me. Don't allow a gambler. Gambling, gambling with their souls to gamble with the provision the Lord has made for me. Tell the Lord. Give me what you have for me. Forgiveness. Give me, Lord, I know you have it for me. Freedom. Freedom. Let the yoke of backsliding be broken. The yoke of apostasy be broken. The yoke of falling and remaining in a falling stage. Let that yoke be broken. And let me have the freedom and the liberty of the children of God. Free to live. Free to rise. Free to run. Run the race. Free. Free to do everything I know Christ has commanded me. Free to live in holiness without allowing a gambler who is gambling with heaven to hinder me, to block my way, to stop me praying. Do not allow a lost man, lost to eternity lost to reality and lost to definite experience in christ don't allow the lost man the lost woman to grab you down from the altar of prayer so that you can be lost like him
ask him, ask, shall be given thee. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. He says, I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have that life abundantly. Don't stay at the superficial surface. Don't abide in your backsliding stage. Religious, but not righteous. Traditional, but not transformed. Having a name that you leave for the nature of Christ, the nature of the holy God of heaven is not there. This is your chance. Don't play with it. Don't gamble with it. And have the power. The power for a new life. The power for a spotless life. And the power for a servicing life. Serving life. Don't be tired. No power without prayer. No unction without prayer. No strength without prayer. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles they were on they were not the weary they will walk they will not faint the lord is waiting for you behold he calleth you behold he calleth you respond come your eyes are blind to your future Come. Why is a blind to his provision for you? Come. He calleth you. Your eyes are blind to the possibilities of grace. Come. He calls you. It will be unto you according to your faith, not according to your feeling, according to your faith. Believe is provided everything, forgiveness, high, deep, wide, freedom, deep and high. Fullness, inexhaustible. Peace within you. Purity. That it grants, will purge, purify your heart. Power. Power. Irresistible. I grant unto you. Believe in him and trust him. Have confidence in him. He cannot fail.
In Jesus' name we pray. You know something I discovered? If somebody is moving, running, or driving a car, and then you stop him, he cannot stop immediately. He still move the momentum of the force driving him, of the car is driving, even when you step on the brake, it will take some time to stop. I discover when people are praying, if they're really into the prayer, the momentum of the prayer, the fire in the prayer, the passion in the prayer, when you say, in Jesus' name we pray, it will be almost impossible to stop immediately. When we're praying with our heart, with our mind, with our soul, when we're deep into that prayer, and when we go beyond the supernatural, our stopping will not be as immediate as that. And I want to counsel you, when you pray, pray. When you pray, let your heart, your mind, your soul, everything you've got, a passion, let it be there so that it's not just that you're watching them. So immediately we're saying, just name we'll pray and everything is quenched. Let's go beyond this superficiality in our prayer. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. A praying man is a powerful man. A praying church is a powerful church. But when you have agents and things stopping the time of prayer and the passion to pray, those people who are the agents of stopping you know, the prayer of the church, they are the destroyers of the church. They are the people that weaken in the church. The people, the people who are behind anywhere they are. And when we're praying, they want to stop the prayer. And when we're saying Jesus' name, they have reconditioned the church. So just stop like that. The destroyers. They're the enemies of the church. They should repent. If they don't, God will deal with anyone that wants to kill the church. You kill the prayer life. You kill the church. You kill the passion, the vision. You kill the church. And you kill the go-getters in the church. The people who have all their heart, all their mind, and they want to bring the church back to holiness anyone behind the curtain wanting to kill the church the lord will kill him before the church dies if alive we didn't raise up the church god didn't raise up the church for a stranger to come from the camp of the devil to come and quench our fire quench our power quench our zeal if you're a worker anyone anyone walking anywhere and you are the agent of satan to reduce the church to no nonentity no power no prayer no passion and we're to worship you rather than worshiping our god the lord will remove you out of the way now ask the lord they will not stop our prayer we're not people that can be stopped by agents of Satan. Our God, our Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our Master is greater than any messenger of the devil behind any curtain. Open your mouth, open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, this church will not die in prayerlessness. This church will not die fearing man, worshiping man. This church will have Christ as Savior, as number one in our heart. We'll exalt him. We'll seek first the kingdom of God. We will not seek to please man, fear man. They want to beat us. They want to harass us. Let them go ahead. We're not worshiping persecutors. We're not worshiping Satan-inspired men or women. We're worshiping a heavenly God, heavenly Christ, heavenly power, having everything that we need. And pastor there, if you know anyone among the people who are working with you, under you, that they want to kill the church, get them out of the way before they kill 
the prayer power of the church. Electronics don't give loudspeaker to people who are praying. They are not praying to me. They are not praying to us. So we don't want to hear any microphone carrying their prayer. Let them pray to God and don't be used as part of the agents that will be transmitting their prayers to us to attempt to stop the move of God in our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We love you. We honor you. We exalt you. We appreciate your love that you have provided all these blessings for us. And help us, Lord, that will not allow anyone, a so-called brother, a so-called sister, a so-called worker, to stop and to gamble and to rubbish all the provision of heaven that we have for us. Lord, we pray, get them out of our way in Jesus' name. With all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, Lord, we come and we desire from you the forgiveness you have, the freedom you have, the salvation you have, the sanctification you have, the holiness you have, the power of the Holy Ghost you have for every one of us. Grant everyone, give everyone, supply everyone in Jesus' name. Let the blessing of forgiveness be real, of freedom be real. That Lord, you take a hypocritical lifestyle away from everyone that says he has got the forgiveness and the freedom. Let salvation be real. Let grace be real. Let the purity of life be real. And let the power of the Holy Ghost be real in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Let everyone turn and right, transform and bring glory to the name of the Savior. Glory to the name of the sanctifier. Glory to the name of the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Let our lives move forward, move on in the direction of your plan, in the direction of the redemption you have for the whole church in Jesus' name. Those who are sick, touch them and kill them. Those who are depressed, touch them and deliver them. Those who have gone astray, touch them and renew their lives. Bring your blessing that is visible, practical, that can be seen. Bring that blessing upon every life in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. God bless everyone.
mercy of the Lord reaches me and I confess I have the forgiveness I have the freedom I have the fullness by faith in Christ tonight is going away now on you. You came here, I'm here. Everything is appearing now globally. Manifest the power that cannot fail. Lord, effect it right now. Demonstrate it right now. Manifest it in every life right now. Confirm your miracle power in everyone. Set everyone Jesus' name we pray. of the Lord reaches me and I confess I have the forgiveness I have the freedom I have the fullness by faith in Christ tonight is going away now on you. You came here, I'm here. Everything is appearing now globally. Manifest the power that cannot fail. Lord, effect it right now. Demonstrate it right now. Manifest it in every life right now. Confirm the miracle power in everyone. Set everyone in Jesus' name we pray. Freedom from satanic affliction. Lord, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you for our Father in the Lord that you have used. To bless us. Lord, we are grateful in Jesus' name. Thank you for our leaders that you have used in one way or the other. Other leaders, other ministers. Father, we are grateful, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, thank you for tonight. Because the power of the Lord will move mightily tonight. No problem coming into this place tonight. We go back in the name of Jesus Christ. They shall be spectacular and notable miracles in the life of your people tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, Lord, you will open the eyes of the blind. You will lift up those who are on crutches and wheelchairs. They will rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. And tonight, every organ that has been dead at the prophecy of the servant of, of, of God, they will receive life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, occupy your tent tonight. You told us that where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be there. And Lord, we know you are here to do your people good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. As we are starting now, Father, 
be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, we want to open our mouth and give thanks unto the Lord. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Let's open our mouth, brethren, and begin to give our appreciation to the Almighty God. Let's open our mouth and thank the Lord. Open your mouth there and thank the Lord. Open your mouth and thank the Lord for all what God has done for us. For this program, since this program started on Thursday, we have seen the great miracles of God, sinners being converted, the sick being healed, diver miracles in the congregation of the people of God. Open your mouth and give thanks to the Lord. I'm not hearing your voice over there. Open the mouth and worship the Lord and thank him for great things the Lord has done for us. How God has given honor to the word of his testimony. How God has wrought great miracles among us. The mighty manifestation of the power of God. In the midst of the people of God, open your mouth and thank the Lord. Open your mouth, brethren, thank the Lord. For his power that has been made manifest among us. In Jesus' name we pray. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Let's open our mouth and turn the Lord for our Father in the Lord, the convener of the GCK. For the power of God upon his life. Open your mouth and thank the Lord. Open your mouth and thank the Lord. Our Father in the Lord. Our general superintendent. The anointing of God upon his life. The power of the Lord upon his life. Throughout this period. Throughout the inception of the GCK, let's give our thanks to the Lord. How God has been using the servant of God. How God has been honoring the words of his mouth. Let's give our thanks to the Lord. Let's turn the Lord for other ministers that God has been using. Our leaders in this region, the region coordinator, and all our other ministers that are supporting the ministry silently, assisting one way or the other. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for all the ministers, the choristers, the chorus leaders, and all the other ministers that God has been using.
In Jesus' name we pray. We come to this night, the night, the fourth day. And the, the, the apostles pray. They ask God that diver miracles will be done by stretching forth thy, thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they have prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak the word of God with boldness. We want to ask the Lord, Lord, tonight, let there be great manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost among us in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth, brethren, and pray. That this night will be the night of the Holy Ghost. The night of the Holy Ghost. The night of salvation. The night of salvation. Every sinner among us tonight, in this congregation tonight, we bow. Every sinner, we bow. There will be mass, mass conversion of soul among us tonight. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, as the Lord did it in the days of the apostles, the Lord will also do the same thing among us tonight. Let's tell the Lord, sinners among children, sinners among the youth, sinners among the adults, whatever the category of sinner they might be, they will bow to the authority of the word of God tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonder wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. We want to tell the Lord, no sickness that is coming here tonight will go back in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and turn that to prayer. Open your mouth and turn that to prayer. Tell the Lord, Lord, tonight, the blind will see. The lame we walk, the deaf we hear, the dumb we speak. Those on, on crutches, they will throw those crutches down. Those on wheelchairs, they will jump out of the wheelchairs. Epilepsy, ulcer, asthma, cancer, whatsoever the name of the sickness. They will bow tonight. We are appealing to all our brethren that have testimony to share. Come to the stage, the tent by the side of the stage here, where you will be interviewed so you can give your testimony. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible said, Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. We want to pray for our Father in the Lord tonight. Father, anointing with the Holy Ghost and power, the type we have never seen before tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for tonight. We are here for you. And we know you are here before we came. Tonight, we will see you and you will see us. 
Tonight, we will touch you and you will touch us. Tonight, we will never go back the same in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray as you are blessing us here, you are also blessing your people all over the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, take total control. In Jesus' name, we pray it. The bright and morning star, you're the face of ten thousand to my soul. You're
Can you jam those hands together to Jesus Christ? Oh, I will sing. Oh. 